Hello and a warm welcome to our year six transition event. My name is Mrs. Cartland and I'm assistant head teacher at Phil Green and you'll be meeting me lots throughout the next few months as I help your children transition to Thill Green. So just a quick thing about the housekeeping of this evening's event. So at each moment you'll notice that different people come onto the screen, we'll all introduce ourselves in a moment and you will have the opportunity to ask questions at the end of this evening's event. So when you want to ask questions, if you just look down at the bottom of your screen, there is a question and answer box. Please do put your questions in there and we will answer as many, many as we can at the end of this event. If it is that your question is specific about your child, we will ask you to save those because we will be calling you as part of the transition event, or you can direct them to our email address that we will send out after this event so we can answer those directly to you and obviously have that more in-depth conversation one-to-one. -one. So any general questions may go into the question and answer box this evening. Throughout tonight's event, we're going to introduce you to some of the team. We're going to talk to you about the next steps of the transition event um, for all of your children. But also, as I said, we're going to answer all of those initial questions that you've got, all of those questions that you just kind of want to know now before we get into lots of the larger events as the government obviously open up and allow us to actually meet you face to face and have the opportunity to come on to site. So if everybody wants to switch on their camera so everyone can see who is in the background with me this evening, that'd be brilliant. Fantastic. And if I hand over to you, Joe, to start the introductions. Hi, thank you, Mrs. Cartland. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Joe Halliday, and I'm the head teacher at Field Green School. Um, and I'm a biology and a science teacher. Uh, good evening. My name is Charlotte Padarello, and I am the deputy head teacher at the Field Green School. And my subjects are maths and economics. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Peter Taplin. I'm an assistant head teacher for teaching and learning and professional development, um, and my subject is geography. Hello, I'm Linda Stevens. I am the special educational needs coordinator and also the senior designated safeguarding officer, and my area is English. Uh, hello, my name is Chris Lambert. I'm in charge of the house system, student engagement and the performance program. Uh, my subjects are drama, English and cultural studies. Hi, I'm Andrea Hayes. I'm the pastoral manager for Key Stage 3, looking after years 7 and 8 and coming out to meet everybody in during transition. Can't wait for it. Um, and I don't have a subject. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody. And then just to let you know, obviously, I'm Mrs. Cartland, assistant head teacher, and my subjects are food, tech, and dance. So I think between us this evening, we have pretty much covered every curriculum area. And hopefully there is a subject that you're really excited about studying in the future. I know that I'm excited to see some of you in the kitchen and in the dance studio as we move forward. So Joe, if I hand over to you, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Sam. Um, so um, especially to um, all of the families, but especially to year six, a uh, huge welcome. We're very, very excited to be with you tonight. We're really looking forward to your questions. So um, year six, we hope that you've got lots of questions for us um, and we're looking forward to answering them. Um, we are absolutely delighted um, and privileged that you have chosen Thiel Green School as your secondary school to come to in September. And um, we have met several of you, um, I think back to October, and we did some very strange socially distanced um, open mornings, open afternoons in the hall. Um, if you attended those, you'll remember those. Um, and it was really lovely to have the chance to meet you then. We've met some of you um, online, we've met some of you over the phone. And um, as, as Sam said, what we're really looking forward to is the opportunity to actually meet you face to face. Um, and by hook or by crook, uh, we hope that we will be able to do that this summer uh, before our start in September. Um, but who would have thought um, this time a year ago, um, if we could have predicted um, when we had all that lovely hot weather and we were optimistic and uh, we would never have thought that a, a year later we'd be still having this kind of meeting um, on Zoom and not face to face but um, here we are um, but we are remaining optimistic that um, as I say things will change in the summer and things will, will, will slowly start um, to move on and um, in our very ideal world we're hoping that by the time we get to September um, 
we will be we will be running something like a, a normal school again. And I know every school around the country um, is hoping for exactly the same thing. So I thought it would be helpful tonight if I uh, updated you a little bit on what we've been doing since we probably last saw you. And I think year six, you'll be particularly interested in this uh, because a lot of it is about you and a lot of it's about opportunities for you. Um, so what I wanted to update you on was um, a lot of the work we've been doing towards student leadership, student experiences and student opportunities at Theo Green School. And um, for those of you who I've spoken to before, um, I'll have probably told you that I'm um, a head teacher ambassador for the Youth Sports Trust, who have been working really hard to promote um, this idea of well schools around the country. And it is um, absolutely our aspiration at Field Green School that we are a well school. And that means that we're a, a well school for our students and for our staff. And what that means is, is that if we look after ourselves really well when we're at school as staff or students, um, then, then we will all lead the school really effectively. And that's whether you're a, a, a new year seven or whether you're a member of staff. And if we are all working to leading our school really well, then um, we want to be a school that has lots and lots of rich opportunity for you. And that means that you will be well prepared to go out um, into life after Field Green School because you'll have had lots and lots of opportunities to take part in and you'll have grown and you'll have learned from them. And then we want a school that is well equipped and that leaves you well equipped, again, to go on to um, college, university, into work um, with skills and knowledge that um, are going to equip you really well to do that. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the things we've been doing that when you start in September um, are going to be new to you and are quite new to our current students as well. Um, so this afternoon, I was really, really proud, and I, I hope some of you have some questions for Mr Lambert about this. Um, I was really proud to um, attend our first live meeting of our new school council. So Mr Lambert's been working really hard with our, um, head, uh, our head students in the sixth form to, to really reset our student council. And I know that many of you as year six will be on student councils at your primary schools. Um, and you'll take part in student voice. So I was really excited to go to our first live one that we've held. And um, the student council is um, representative of all students across the school. And uh, we had some terrific year sevens there this afternoon, right up through to year 13. And um, the way that we're now running our student council means that it is really a council that is going to have a voice in Theo Green School and really talk about important things and be really well supported to bring about the changes that we know are important for students because they're telling us. So I really hope that if you're on a student council now in your primary school, you will think about that. And if you haven't been on a student council yet, I would really, really like you to think about that too and think about, well, what can you offer to Theo Green School when you come here? So something else we have been really working on is student leadership. And um, we are very clear at Field Green School that we know that as year six students, you are the leaders in your primary school and you have the positions of responsibility. Um, and what we don't want is a secondary school where you come along and everyone just sees you as the young ones again. And we know that you've got leadership capacity, you've got leadership potential, but you've already got leadership skills. So we have been over the last year developing all of the opportunities that um, we are going to um, ask you to take part in. And we really, really hope you'll take us up on that offer. So we've been looking at sports leadership posts. We've been looking at ambassador posts around the school. We've been looking at um, anti-bullying ambassadors, um, young leaders. We've got sports captains, house captains, and there are all sorts of leadership opportunities for you to take part in. And coming into Field Green School, um, we know that every single one of you has got um, real character, has got your own set of talents, and your own unique personality. And we're looking forward to you coming here 
and showing us who you are as a person and, and taking part in the opportunities that we give you. So apart from leadership opportunities, Mrs. Badarello um, has been working with Miss Porter, who's one of our science teachers. And we have started a new programme now, and we started this in January. So again, it's ready for you when you come in September, a programme called Key Stage 3 Scholars. And we are really, really excited about this programme. And again, please, please do ask Mrs. Badarello some questions about this this evening. Um, and the Key Stage 3 Scholars programme is about you as Year 7 students having the opportunity to study things that may not be particularly to do with school, something that you're really interested in and you want to be able to study. And so, for example, we might say, well, um, this term, Key Stage 3 scholars are going to be fo focusing on climate change. But what that means is that you will be able to study any aspect of climate change that you want. You can look at it in any way. You can look at it from any angle, whatever is of interest to you. And as you go through Key Stage 3, you'll be able to go up the, the different levels to becoming a really independent learner, studying through your own projects. And what we're most excited about with this programme is it doesn't matter whether you think you're good at this kind of programme at all. It's about developing you to be the best scholar that you can be. So I hope you will ask Ms. Badarola a little bit more about some of the, some of the projects that we've, we've got planned there. So those are the kind of areas I wanted to cover tonight, really, just to say we've got lots and lots that we've been working on, even in this year when we've only really been in school from September to December. We've been focused this year on student opportunity and student leadership. So you're coming in year six at a time when all of the hard work has been done. And we're really looking forward to you being able to come in and just start to take part in all of these programs that are gonna make your life really interesting at secondary school. Um, and really what we hope is that um, as you come to secondary school, just your, your, your field of view will open up a little bit more and um, you'll be able to pick up on opportunities that you've not had before. So uh, we know that children who come to Field Green School and take up opportunities are the children who do really, really well because they're busy and they're involved and they're building relationships and they're building communication skills. So I really challenge all of you to, to, to be that person when you come here. So um, we're thoroughly looking forward to seeing you. Um, I'm going to hand um, back to Mrs. Cartland at this point, And I think Mrs. Cartland will ask me to uh, say a few words at the end, um, which I'm going to plan as I, as I hear the questions that we go through this evening. But um, Please, please do come and see us in the summer when we're given the opportunity to do that. And um, we, can't, we can't wait to see you. So Mrs. Cartland, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so far for all of the questions that are coming through on the question and answer function. There's lots of exciting ones there. And I know that everyone's going to be um, very keen to answer those in a moment. So if you do have any questions tonight and you have just joined us, then please do put them in the question and answer function and we'll ask, answer those as we go along tonight. Now, I know that lots of you will be absolutely excited about coming to Thill Green School. You've just heard lots of wonderful things about student opportunity at Thill Green, all of the exciting things we have planned about the house system, all of that about our student council, but there may be a little bit of um, a question in terms of how will I settle in, who's going to help me along the way, um, who will I go to, what will my tutor be, and obviously everything that we have planned over the next few months is very much answering all of the questions that we know that um, will be going through your head, and there is no question that is too big or too small or silly or anything else, so please do ask them as we go along. Now hopefully technology is all going to be my friend this evening, and I'm going to have the opportunity to show you a short video about how our year sevens felt um, after only 12 days at Phil Green School. So literally they had been at the school and if you think about last year, our year, to, our year sevens transitioned across um, in a very strange environment in the fact that they had never visited Phil Green, they had only met us virtually, they had a quick um, tour of the car park to meet their tutor which was a very um, strange event but obviously gave them the opportunity to at least meet their tutor face to face. Um, and after 12 days, it was amazing at how quickly they settled into Phil Green School. So hopefully all of this will work and you'll be able to see my video.
Stacey, can you just let me know if everyone can see the video, please? Yeah, that's come up fine. Fantastic, thank you. So after 12 days, our students very much felt that they had settled into Thill Green um, School community absolutely brilliantly. And there were lots of comments, as you saw, about nice teachers, the older students at Thill Green School really helping them to settle in. And I will always remember that we um, let the students off with a map and they were there quickly working their way around to their new lessons and knew lots about the school even before joining because of the transition events that we had put on. So in terms of the next few months, we have got lots of events planned and hopefully you'll be able to see some slides in a moment that I will put up. Stacey, could you just let me know if you could see those? Yeah, they're up. Okay, brilliant. So you may have seen this go out on social media already. This is our newly formed transition team. Now, some of those team you'll notice are on the call tonight. Now, there are two very amazing people um, in the background, Sandra Eaton and Danielle Burdett. Now, these two ladies know absolutely everything about Phil Green School and everything in terms of supporting your child to even get here. If you have questions about bus journeys and everything else, Sandra is definitely your lady as she knows all of the hidden secrets along the way to get to Phil Green School and bus journeys and all of that information about uniform so please do keep directing the questions I know that Sandra sent out all of that information to you today and then for some of you you may be speaking to Caroline in the background who is supporting the transition of our SEND students now lots of you would have seen this map it was sent out to you now this is the really exciting thing there are 20 points planned on the transition journey and I must admit there are a few secret ones along the way that we will throw in as well um, because our team have had some really fantastic ideas over the last few weeks so at the moment we are kind of on point number two about obviously we've introduced the map to you we have sent the map um, out to everybody now over the next few weeks you'll see that there are lots of things planned in terms of us releasing videos to you that you can watch at home there is the opportunity hopefully in the summer term for you to come on to school site for your parents to meet your tutor with you but also for you to meet your tutor group and actually try some lessons at Bill Green School fingers crossed we'll be able to get to that bit which will be absolutely brilliant you'll also have a really exciting period in the middle where you're going to meet who your head of house is you're going to find out more about 
about your tutor and what it means to have a tutor and who might be in your tutor group and what their interests are, which I know is a very exciting um, part of the process. And our tutors get very excited about revealing who they are. And actually, it's very top secret at the moment and not even the rest of the panel tonight know who our amazing tutor team will be for September. So we're looking forward to really announcing that as we go along. Now, lastly, to help you on your transition journey, there is a page on our website. Um, obviously, the address is there and we will be sending it out afterwards. Now, this page will be updated over the next few months with lots of information. Now, the exciting thing that is on there is there are some department transition challenges. And I know that some of you have been really independent and have found this already, which has been absolutely amazing. Um, and some of you over the Easter holidays sent me pictures of amazing um, chocolate Easter cakes. Some of you um, made phenomenal pizzas. As you can see, lots of them food tech based, which is absolutely brilliant. But some of you had also done some history tasks where you were researching into different areas as well, which was absolutely brilliant. So please do have a look on there. I know that some of you are asking in the questions box about can I come and have a little look around the school? Absolutely. Hopefully in the summer term that will happen. But if you want to have a look around the school before that, Mr. Lambert has already made a tour video that is on the website. And also there is a little bit of a quiz that goes alongside that. And if you keep submitting all of your work to the transition email address, then what we will do is we'll start accumulating house points before you even start. And obviously they will all go towards your house point total and your tutor group totals as part of our competition. So please do keep sharing all of the work in the background with us because it is absolutely amazing. So thank you very much. Now, if everyone would like to put on um, your camera, that'd be absolutely brilliant. So we can start to direct the questions to each other. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Um, so Mr. Lambert, this question is going to come to you first of all, because it's drama related. When we do drama, will we have the opportunity um, to perform, but also to get really into character and have the opportunity to use costume and props and everything that's exciting? So do you want to tell us a little bit about drama and obviously all the performance and opportunities there are, please? Right. Well, um, we teach drama as a subject in school, um, as well as lots of drama and performance opportunities outside of the subject, too. Um, so outside of the subject, uh, we have loads of opportunities to to dress up. Um, there's lots of costume and uh, makeup and set and props and all those sorts of things that we would use as well. So under normal conditions, that's precisely what we'd be doing. Same in class as well. Uh, we have um, elements of costume work throughout all of Key Stage 3, Year 7, 8 and 9. And um, great fun things like um, pantomime, where you you can either bring in or we provide certain elements of costume. Right now, at the moment, we can't use costume at the moment because we can't pass and share things like that. Uh, but that will, as soon as everything's all right, we'll be, we'll be doing that again. So there's loads of opportunities in that regard. The performance opportunities in terms of performing are absolutely huge here. We do loads and loads of stuff. So we have a summer show, um, which um, in the last, last time one we did, uh, we performed in the um, Greeka at Bradfield, so outside. Um, some of you may have seen that if you're in year four um, or year five, um, and that um, was a show called The Comic Mystery Plays. We've done a, a school musical as well last year um, called Sister Act. Um, we do have a school musical that usually occurs in February. We also have um, a sick form show called Winter Haunt, which is at the Battle Library. We have a year seven show that's only performed by year sevens uh, called The Literary Mystery Plays, which takes place all around the school. And, it, and the uh, parents come along and they will walk from space to space watching um, each group, each drama class who prepared this work over their lessons. And they come in one evening and watch watch that in lots of different places. Really exciting evening as well. So um, and there's lots of other opportunities, for example, in terms of house, there's house performances, too. But I'll talk about house again in a moment. So I don't want to tread on house's toes uh, for that for that regard. But um, uh, so many opportunities, lots of costume, lots of makeup. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. And alongside, as Mr. Lambert was talking, there was a question about those students who don't necessarily want to be in the limelight and performing. And is there other opportunities? And of course, there is the opportunity for students to get involved in lighting and behind scenes and obviously choreographing and directing. We have lots of students who enjoy those opportunities along the way. Um, Mr. Chaplin, there was a question. Um, could you just explain what your role is? Because there was a few people that didn't catch it um, and what you do at Thilbring School. 
Uh, thanks, Ms. Carter. Yeah, with pleasure. Um, so my role as a teacher at Pilgrim School is to basically look after teaching and learning and staff development and how we really push forward to make sure that every student um, in every lesson has high quality teaching and learning. So recently uh, this year, we've been looking at challenge and we've been looking at questioning um, and really making sure that uh, when students go into lessons, they're made to think hard. Uh, I also look at things like homework across the curriculum and how we make sure homework is engaging um, and kind of meaningful. So uh, year six is you'll, you'll be pleased to know that when you come up to uh, uh, start in year seven, we, we ease you into homework. You're not going to get loads of homework straight away. Um, so we have something known as a homework menu um, and you'll get two subjects each term, giving you a homework menu where you have a choice of activities to do. And this might give you the opportunity to find out about something that you're not necessarily going to get to cover in that subject. It might give you an opportunity to really develop uh, your understanding within that subject or present something in a different way. Um, for example, you might uh, make castles in history or you might write some songs in geography um, and, and really kind of get, get you uh, doing on that. So, so yeah, so my, my main role is looking at teaching and learning and how we continue to develop and improve and make sure we have the highest quality lessons and learning going on at Field Green School. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Taplin. And Mrs. Halliday, I'm coming across to you. There's quite a few um, questions about PE, um, so I'm going to put them all into one for you to answer. So um, is there going to be the opportunity to take part in rug rugby um, in terms of our fitness suite and gym? When will we have the opportunity to use that um, and what sports can we take part in at Phil Green School? Goodness me. Um, thank you, Mrs. Carter. What great questions. Um, um, yes. Um, you definitely have a chance to play rugby. Um, so whether you are a girl or a boy, um, you have the chance to play uh, rugby and football. And um, I, I'm in danger of just sort of listing a, a long list of sports at the moment. So at the moment, uh, we've now got the tennis nets up and we're starting to play tennis in our PE lessons now. And um, of course the athletics track has now been um, set up as well. And I'm, I'm still really hoping that we're gonna have our incredible sports day this summer, um, which is, it's, it's the event of the year. And of course um, our year, our current year sevens didn't, didn't get to take part in that. Oh, sorry, our current year eight didn't get to take part in that last year because of coronavirus. Um, but it really is an incredible event um, where everybody's dressed up in their house colors. Um, and all the staff are dressed up in house colours and there are staff races and the sixth formers are dressed up in the house mascot. So it's 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 really sort of the, the year of sport coming together. So what else can you can do? I, we do bench ball and dodgeball and um, netball and basketball. So I think you get the idea that the list goes on. Um, but we are also looking at how we can do things a little bit differently. So um, Mrs. Badarello has just been looking at how we can get a, a really small group of um, students to go and try sailing at one of the local sailing clubs. Um, and Mr. Neil, who runs our Duke of Edinburgh programme, um, has been, he's been actually been down to the sailing club tonight and is, is now looking at how we can work more closely with the sailing club for the Duke of Edinburgh programme as well. So there are there are all sorts of other things. Um, our P staff over lockdown, they've taken the opportunity to have some training. And we now have P staff who are trained in uh, yoga and Zumba and um, different sort of fitness types of activity as well. Um, so whilst there's a, a lot about team sports and we take part um, in a huge number of fixtures at Field Green School and our P department are really competitive. Um, the, there's also a huge amount of sport that you can do because it's fun and you just want to take part or you just want to be fit. You just want to look after your, your physical fitness, which we know is so important for everything else. Um, we do have a lovely gym. Um, as you can imagine, as a year seven student, you'd be quite limited in what you could do in there because it's a very highly controlled, um, a highly controlled area with a certain amount of equipment. So um, we probably wouldn't be throwing you into the gym and onto the treadmill in your first P lesson. Um, but I can guarantee you will be doing a lot of running around um, in our amazing um, hall and on our incredible fields, which I hope you've had a chance to see. Um, but um, if you haven't, you, you will definitely do that. So sport is a big part of life at Field Green School. And um, you don't have to be a great sports person. You just have to be somebody who wants to 
look after their body, be physically well, and know that if you do that, your learning will be better, your sleep will be better, um, and it, it's all about looking after yourself. So I hope um, that answers the questions. Um, I hope I haven't left out anything too obvious. We may get onto trips. Trips may be a different question, so I, I won't go into that yet. I won't go into that, although I was going to mention skiing, but I won't. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that, Mrs. Cartland. Thank you. I will come back to you in a moment, because as you, as you can see, there is a question about residentials. Um, Mrs. Okay. Stevens, if I could come to you. So there's some questions specifically around support for SEND students with the transition to Phil Green School, but also specifically about those students that need support with a stammer. Okay, so when, um, obviously Mrs. Carson has talked to you about the incredible programme we've got in place for you, for all of our students, but if you do feel that your son or daughter needs some extra transition visits, we are more than happy once we're allowed to let people back in the building to do as many transition visits as you need. So if it's one extra, two extra, three extra, that's not a problem. So what we try and do is work with you and what your son or daughter needs rather than saying, right, we've got two extra visits, that's all you can have. So it may be they just need to pop in for half an hour and and what we tend to do is we will buddy them up with a current year seven who will walk them around and talk to them from a student's perspective. So rather than listening to the boring adults telling them all the things we think are important, they can talk to a year seven who will be able to share their concerns and worries a little bit. And that's how we sort of like to treat our extra transition visits. So we'll be very much guided by the young people and by yourselves as to, as to what they need. Once they arrive with us, um, if your son or daughter has an EHCP plan, we will obviously work very closely with you, looking at what provision is needed. Um, if they are on the um, SCN register on the K code, but don't have an EHCP, we will have also come in and met with you in school. Mrs. Hayes and myself will come into school, we'll talk to your teachers, we'll meet all the young people and we'll talk to you as parents, just to work out what works best for your son and daughter. And again, our model here is very much that we don't have a set program that we can give you a name of. We will work with you and try and break down the barriers to learning. So we are not label focused. We will look at what your son and daughter needs to be successful. And we will do our absolute best to try and do that for them and to help, help them succeed and gain as much independence as possible whilst they're at school. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. And Mrs. Hayes, if I pass straight over to you, um, could you explain a, a little bit about the work that you do with the year six teachers and also how tutor groups are formed and that exciting job that you do that I don't quite understand how we always get to this wonderful thing where you have matched friends um, together, at, which they don't even know are gonna be friends because they come from our 32 different feeder schools, um, but she always manages to find someone that has a similar interest. Thank you, Mrs. Hayes. Thank you. So um, guys, really looking forward to meeting you all. And um, so sort of pick up on, on what I do with, with your teachers. The idea is we try to get as much information as possible so that we are in the best possible place to help you, support you, ease you straight in when you get here. So um, alongside meeting yourselves, as Mrs. Um, Stephen said, I'll come out um, and I'll also come out with um, members of the leadership team. And, and meet you guys. I also meet with your year six teachers. Um, last year, that was an awful lot by Zoom. I'm hoping to come in and do some of that face-to-face -face this year. Not that I don't love a Zoom meeting. Um, and then what I get is I get ideas about who you work well with. You know, sometimes there might be somebody that you don't get so well with. So, you know, we help support you with that. Um, things that you, um, you like as your interest. So that kind of feeds in a little bit to what Mrs. Carton was saying about when I then put you into tutor groups, it gives me an opportunity to make sure that when you go into tutor groups, um, especially if you're somebody who might be coming on their own, um, and we can talk about the singles event, I'm sure Mrs. Carton would like that at some point in there. Um, we, I can match you up with somebody that you have a similar interest with. So um, this year, for example, um, I had a couple of people coming in who absolutely both loved computers and they're off and running and, and get, on, get on great. Um, so, so yeah, so it's about getting as much information as possible regarding tutor groups when I put you together, um, tutor group is another lesson within the school. Um, we, and I always try to make sure that you're in a tutor group with, um, if you're coming from, from a school with other people, with at least one person you know, it might not necessarily be your best friend, um, but it will be a familiar face and then obviously social time is when you get up to meet 
where you can meet with all your older friends, but tutor group is a great opportunity to meet some new friends. And actually one of the things I ask for um, the students coming in from where there's lots of you coming in is that you take a bit of time to maybe get to know some of those people who haven't got lots of people coming in and make them, you know, make them feel comfortable and, and buddy up with them. Because I'm sure as you can appreciate, it might be feel a bit more scary if you're coming in by yourself. But actually, what I've seen is is everybody gets together and just you make great friends on transition day and you keep that going and yeah it just it just works it's magic really <laughs> fantastic thank you mrs hayes and as mrs hayes um did mention we do run a singles event for those students that are coming across alone from their primary school but also um last year we had a few students who were the only boy or the only girl coming across and obviously you are also welcome to come to those events and at those events we have the opportunity to do some icebreakers but obviously for you to exchange some details with those students before the summer so that obviously you have somebody that you can meet on day one but also our pastoral managers are in the canteen on the first day and I can absolutely guarantee that you will have someone to sit with have a chat to and will absolutely leave the canteen smiling with a friend along the way um, as Mrs Hayes said she can do all of that in the background by magic. Um, Mrs Badarello there's been a question about a typical day at Phil Green School and what does it look like if you could take that one thank you. Oh that's a brilliant question thank you for asking that. Um, well um, the, the fantastic thing about our school is that we have uh, specialist teachers in our subjects and one of the things that you as uh, year six students will notice when you join us in September is that um, we have um, these specialist subjects and we have a very very wide and broad curriculum so what that means is that you will be studying some subjects that um, you may not have actually studied beforehand uh, so for example uh, technology um, getting to explore things like woodwork, metalwork, um, cooking and so forth. Um, also have computing lessons alongside the kind of more traditional subjects. Um, so the answer is there isn't no, no, no two days are the same. So they are, they do vary somewhat. Um, there will be an opportunity to uh, meet as part of the tutor group. Um, and then um, we're, we're looking at the moment in terms of um, the actual structure of the school day, because we've had to change it a little bit this year due to due to COVID. Um, but in essence, um, we're looking to make sure that year seven and eight have an opportunity to have great times together um, and um, really give, give them that opportunity to kind of unwind and um, and relax. Um, we also have um, an amazing system of sick form crew who support at break times and lunch times and make sure all those amazing football um, tournaments and table tennis tournaments and all the rest of it um, take place. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, but yeah, the answer is there is there are no two days that are the same. Um, so a wide variety. Fantastic, thank you. And there is a question that came up very early on, and I think I'll take this one. It was about detentions. Um, and it's amazing because if I think if we had been in the LRC this evening um, and we had had the opportunity to discuss detentions, um, I would have been asking you, has anyone ever um, been asked to stay behind for a couple of seconds at the end of a lesson so their teacher can have a conversation with them? Or has anyone ever had that moment of a, of a quick interaction with a member of staff outside of a lesson? I'm sure lots of people would have then stuck up their hand and everything else. And I know that as you transition into secondary school, there's always this kind of big fear of a detention. Um, and I can absolutely promise you that children that come to Phil Green School that are really hardworking and follow the expectations that we have and are really demonstrating hard work, progress and respect at all times, don't get detentions. Um, because actually we are a school, as you can see, who want to give opportunities to students, who want to praise, who want to give house points. And I know that Mr Lambert is gonna to want to talk lots about house points in a moment. Um, so it's nothing to fear um, because actually we know that the vast majority of our students do the right thing at all the right times. And at times, because nobody is perfect and sometimes we get things wrong. Um, I think everybody here um, this evening would say there are times when we make decisions and we have to stop and go, okay, let's have a moment to reflect. And a detention is not the opportunity to sit and copy out lines or sit in silence and just continually write or anything like that. A detention is the opportunity, and I probably don't even like the word detention, is an opportunity to reflect and have a conversation. It's for us to just have a moment to stop and to go, okay, what was the barrier 
to you succeeding in this lesson today? What was the barrier? Let us help you. Let us understand. How can we um, make sure that this doesn't happen in the future? So it's a real conversation opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to think, OK, what can we do differently as the adults in the classroom? But also, what can you do, do differently as the student moving forward? And sometimes, as we said, we have been in lockdown for a very long time and it takes a little bit of time for students to get back into things. And obviously, as you join Phil Green School, it will take you a little bit of time to get used to the routines and everything else. But we know that you'll get there absolutely quickly. And obviously, some polite reminders from staff, if you're quickly doing those things, then we won't have detentions along the way and everything else. And as I said, lots of house points being rewarded along the way. So, Mr Lambert, would you like to talk about the positive of house points and the house system and what happens with the Governor's Cup? Because I'm sure that's very much more exciting than detentions. I, I would love to talk about that. Uh, yes, so um, the, the house system, just in case you don't know, is made up of four houses, uh, Benyon, Piper, uh, Hunt and Scott. Um, and you can get house points, as uh, Mrs. Cotton was saying, for progress, hard work and respect, but also for um, things you do in extracurricular. So if you're taking part in clubs, um, if you're um, in the co various competitions that we run as well, um, such as house music, house performance, house quiz, house finale, house challenge day, sports day, and various charity days we run as well. Um, and the teachers will be giving you house points. The most common way you get house points is in the lessons themselves. And these are accumulated um, in this special um, house point ladder that you can see here. Um, so when you get um, 100 points, you get bronze, a bronze certificate, then silver, then pearl for four, uh, for 300, then ruby for 400 and so on, all the way to 1000 points for the Philosopher's Stone. We had a lot of students get the Philosopher's Stone last year, which is a beautiful trophy that's in our trophy cabinet. And their names are emblazoned on the bronze plaque. Uh, and it's a beautiful, a beautiful uh, uh, celebration of their work. Um, so all the way to a thousand. And there are so many opportunities to get house points um, throughout the school day and outside the school day as well. Um, and the house system is run by four heads of house, each uh, who are members of staff, but they also have house captains with them who are sixth formers. And that's a student leadership role. And they help with uh, organising sports teams and mentoring um, and um, also pushing house points, running assemblies. Uh, and running clubs as well and visiting tutor groups and creating house quizzes and all those sorts of things as well. So you'll be able to meet these students who've come up through the house system and are now uh, top of the pile and, and, uh, and showing you how it's done. So um, uh, just so you know, so you can try and remember, it's really important this. Okay, so the mascot for Benyon is a lion. For Piper, it's a dragon. Uh, for Scott, it is a duck. And for Hunt, it is a tiger. So try and remember that because that's going to come up quite a lot. Um, and all the heads of house are incredibly competitive. Right now, Piper are in the lead um, and Benyon are not too far behind. Um, Hunt and Scott are a little bit further behind, but they are neck and neck with each other. Literally only 100 points between those two houses at the moment. So it's a really exciting time right now. Um, we're really looking forward to sports day. Um, and uh, all the uh, all the uh, amazing points that will be accrued on that day too, where you see that mascots out racing each other as well. Um, so um, I think I've said everything about house points and houses, but it get, I get very excited about it. So um, I hope that's helped. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. And Mr. Chaplin, I didn't know if you wanted to take a moment to mention our Values Week and obviously how excited you get about those opportunities to visit classrooms. Um, yeah, so every, at the end of every big term, so just before Christmas, just for Easter and then just for some holidays, we have a uh, focus a focus week, um, normally the week before the end, where teachers um, will look at uh, a specific value and award little tokens. So here's our Easter token, and they'll hand out one of these um, to uh, each student and they get to put it into the box at reception and that goes into a prize draw. Uh, so just this Easter just gone, um, which was absolutely fantastic to do it, um, having come back from remote learning, we awarded about 30 to 40 uh, prizes, Easter egg prizes and gifts that were donated from the local community, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and uh, went around, um, I was in, in an Easter bunny outfit, this carton and had our Easter bunny ears on. Um, 
and we popped into lessons and just celebrated those students that were getting it right um, and, and deserved to, to have that recognition. Um, at Christmas, we do we do something similar. We go around um, and, and, and award that and at the end of the year. Um, so it's a real moment for us to really capture and celebrate and say, well done for those students that are getting it right and, and, and getting that recognition for getting it right. So um, yeah, thank you for the question, Ms. Cutland. Brilliant. And what Mr. Taplin forgot to say is that he does come out with some absolutely awful jokes um, that are related to Easter eggs and things as we um, walk around. And as you can see, everyone's nodding and smiling um, at Mr. Taplin's jokes. Um, so, Mrs. Stevens, I'm going to start with this question and I'm going to pass on to you because it's a question about anti-bullying. Um, and first of all, there was a question about who is the first point of contact for you as a parent, um, because obviously you've, come, you've gone from one teacher to a number of teachers um, that are going to be on the timetable. Um, so obviously your child tutor is their first point of contact. This is the person they're going to see every morning and they will support them throughout their journey at Phil Green School. Um, so you can obviously direct your questions um, directly to the tutor. If it is it's something specifically about one subject, so you had a question about maths for example you can always go directly to the maths teacher and ask those questions as well now in order to contact a member of staff obviously lots of them are um, very busy in classrooms throughout the day and are busy moving around the school site so you can email the tutor or the subject teacher or you can leave a message at reception and then they will get back to you very quickly and be able to help you along the way with all of your questions and then mrs stevens if i hand over to you for anti-bullying Thank you, Mrs. Cartland. So we take um, anti-bullying very seriously in the school. We are part of the Diana Award and we have a group of our students who are anti-bullying ambassadors. So what their role is, is to work with members of staff to help inform us of any concerns. For example, if they think there's an area of the school which isn't being um, patrolled by staff that they feel is not secure, they might feed back to us. Or if they feel that there is an issue that's happening at the moment, maybe there's a new um, social media site they're aware of, or if they've heard about something in the community. So these young people will actively work with us to help us improve how we can safeguard our young people in school. So that's really exciting. And what we will do, we are very aware that there is a difference um, between friendship fallouts and bullying and sometimes it can be difficult for young people to make that distinction so initially we will um, talk to the young people involved and for most incidents they are one-offs and we can work with those two young people or groups of people and matters are resolved if that's the case as a parent you probably won't be informed it will just be it could be something as simple as somebody's had a new haircut and um, someone's laughed at it yeah and they felt that that was bullying well that that's that's a, that's a friendship issue and we can we can work with that if it becomes more sustained or if there is felt to be that the, the first conversation didn't have the desired result then we will work with those young people again it may be that we will do some ELSA work some peer mentoring some group discussions and if it gets to stage two then we will inform you as a parent and you'll be aware of what is happening and what we're doing in school um, if Again, if, you know, if things do not resolve the way we want to, we will work with any external agencies. We may invite you in as parents. We can do restorative meetings. Again, it's the same as the way we like to work with students who have SEN. We will look at what the problem is and we will be solution focused. So we have a five stage procedure, which is on our website, you can look at, but it is not set in stone. We will look at each individual case and try and work with the young people involved to see what it is that we need to do. And it will be very much on a therapeutic route and an educational route. Um, sanctions will be there if necessary, but giving a student a sanction does not change their behaviour. So what we need to do is we need to educate and we need to help our young people work together in our school and wider community. So that is very much the, the way we like to deal with anti-bullying in Phil Green. Thank you, Ms. Cartland. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. And as you were talking, um, there was a question about members of staff on duty, um, because obviously the Phil Green site is a little bit larger than some of the primary schools that um, some of the students are transitioning from. Now, you will never miss a member of staff on duty, I can promise you that, because we are all in very attractive high-vis jackets um, as we walk around on duty. So you will not miss us. Mr. Taplin has a pink high-vis jacket. I have a bright yellow one. You'll be able to spot us and you can go and have a conversation 
conversation with any member of staff that's on duty. I really like the opportunity. I know that Mrs Halliday loves the opportunity to get out in the sunshine and speak to students. And sometimes you'll see Mrs Halliday um, take on a few students at the um, table tennis tables um, to show off her skills along the way. So please do um, stop and have a conversation with us along the way. And there was a question about toilets as well. And I appreciate um, it comes up quite a lot. Um, now the toilets at Thill Green, there's lots of toilets at Thill Green School, so please do not worry. And the toilets are for designated year groups. Um, so what you'll find is that the toilets for the year sevens are for those students. And you wouldn't find yourself sharing a toilet with a sixth former because obviously they have their own um, toilets over in sixth form. And generally what you'll find is that you'll find one or two students in the toilets and then they're quickly out because actually there's far more exciting things to be doing at your break and lunchtime than hanging out in a toilet. Um, and Mr Lambert, did you want to tell everybody a bit about clubs fair and all the wonderful things that are available at lunchtime? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of exciting uh, clubs uh, on, on offer at uh, Field Green. Um, we In about mid-September, late September, we have what's called a clubs fair. It's a little bit like a freshers fair uh, that you have at university where you've got lots of stands. And the students come in and they will sign up for various clubs and they'll, they'll be given information about those clubs as well. So you have things like drama club, dance club, um, DV, uh, film club. Um, uh, uh, there's a house mural competition club as well. Um, manga club, Lego club. Quite a few of the clubs, and the Lego club is a really good example, are based on... Um, things that the students have asked for for themselves and I think that's one of the key things about it is if you've got an idea for a club then please do say and we will try and facilitate that as well there's lots of obviously sports teams as well music clubs um uh, there's also uh, I, I saw there's something about choir as well that's that um, Mr Upton um runs that as well so there's lots of opportunities for um artistic clubs uh, as well as um, as a science club as well very excellent science club that we run here too so um, loads of opportunities most of those clubs take place at lunchtime uh, there are a few clubs that run after school such as photography club and uh, Mr Fletcher's coding club which is a computer club as well that does run after school um, and um, it, it, it's up to you which ones which ones you which ones you go to but they're a great way to spend your lunch time so it's a good way of um, meeting new people and the people with similar interests and trying out new things um, so uh, do do join us at the, at the club's fair um, uh, and look forward to seeing you Fantastic. Thank you. And there are lots and lots of questions coming through. So please do keep them coming through from us. And I'm sure that no one's going to mind if I squeeze in a couple of more um, before Mrs. Halliday um, ends this evening's event. Um, if I don't get round to answering your question tonight, please do not worry, as we will send a written response home for all of those questions that we haven't quite covered. Um, Mrs. Badarello, really early on in tonight's event, there was a question around GCSE results and specifically what were our GCSE results for last year. And I know it's been a challenging time for some of our year 11 and 13. So do you want to explain about results? Yeah, um, thank you. Um, so last year was a different year um, and we were um, really disappointed for our students that they didn't actually have the opportunity to sit the exams themselves. Um, obviously COVID took its role there. Um, but what we know is through the... <laughs> absolutely phenomenal work that we've undertaken in the school for the last two or three years in terms of the curriculum, in terms of teaching and learning, in terms of all these amazing opportunities, getting students to really work independently. And that's had a huge impact in terms of pupil progress. And um, you, you can access the results. They are available on our school website. Um, if you click on, on, on the site, then it will take you through that. Um, the only thing with that, I'll just, um, kind of put a caveat in that that the joint council for qualifications basically um, gave us quite stringent rules in terms of what we were and weren't allowed to award um, but overall um, the, the the progress of our students is on an absolutely huge upwards trajectory um, and we you know we are in the process for year 11 and year 13 at the moment in terms of awarding the grades and we, as I said you know I th things are hugely improved um so by the time that your son or daughter joins us um you know the, the results that will be um that they will go on to achieve i'm sure will absolutely match their desires and their their, their aspirations for their future future careers 
Fantastic, thank you. And if you do want to have a look at some of the destinations of our students, there are a couple of places that you can look on the website. We have just updated our destinations page and you can see all of the exciting things our students have gone into in the future. But also on our Facebook page, there were some videos from our students um, that were sent to us in September of them at university and in the world of work, which is very, very exciting. So please do have a look at them. Um, Mrs. Halliday, a very quick question for you. Um, what are the timings of the school day? <laughs> Thank you for saving that for me, Mrs. Cartland, because um, the timings of the school day have changed so much over the last year. Um, so um, I, I'm sure Mrs. Cartland will tell me if I get this completely wrong. Um, so we start at 8.35 with tutor time. I can see you laughing, Mrs. Cartland. We start at 8.35 with tutor time. So every student gets to spend the first 20 minutes of the day with their tutor group. Um, and their tutor and that's when we may do some PSHE, we may do a house quiz, uh, we may have some um, group, group reading time, um, so different things every day. Um, then we have the first lesson of the day which is one hour um, and that's 8.55 till 9.55. Now we've got a complicated timetable at the moment so um, normally a day may look like um, we would have period one and then we may have period two. So we'd have the second lesson, which would be a full hour as well. And then we'd get to around 11 o'clock and have a, a 20 or so minute break time. Um, thank you for nodding, Mr. Taplin. I know I'm doing well here. And um, then we may have period three and period four, which would both be an hour, take us to lunchtime, which would be about 40, 40 minutes. And then the last period of the day, which would be from two till three o'clock. Um, we're on a split day at the moment. It's really complicated because of the bubbles that we've got. And we're just looking at, at the moment about if, if in September we can have a normal school day again. Is there anything we want to do slightly differently there to make it an even better day? But it's five one hour periods, um, 20 minutes or so with tutor time and then a, a shorter morning break and a longer lunch time, so you've got time to take part in all of those clubs that Mr Lambert was talking about. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and lastly, there are lots of questions in the background regarding uniform and what our school uniform is and who our suppliers are. Now, you would have received a letter from Mrs Burdett just before the Easter holidays to explain that our current uniform supplier is Stevenson's and that will be changing in November. And within that letter, Mrs Burdett explained that we are very much hoping um, to do a sale on school sites. We had a very successful sale of secondhand uniform um, and had the opportunity of obviously for parents to come and visit us along the way as well. Um, so we will keep you updated. Obviously that is our hope that we'll be able to do those events. Now, what I say about school uniform is just to be um, very, very careful about purchasing it just because there are some very clear guidance that we will send you, but also on one of the live events that we will have on school site, we'll have a little fashion show um, from some of our year seven students to show you all of the different uniform options. Um, because some of you have asked about, obviously do girls have to wear skirts or can they wear trousers? And what does the PE kit look like? We will give you a fashion show of the uniform and also explain um, what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable along the way. So you can understand that. And also we'll send you some pictures of all of that information. We will send that out to you with lots and lots of notice. So please do not worry. You will not get a letter in the middle of August and expect you to purchase your uniform in September. We will share all of that um, with you with um, the whole of the information of everything typed up in terms of anything that you need to know as a parent in a very handy um, parent booklet alongside email addresses for key members of staff so it's all in one place so you're not having to quickly find pieces of paper along the way or anything else um, and we will share that as I said with lots and lots of notice so that you can obviously plan your purchases and I know at the moment there is a slight um uh, with shops currently reopening and everything, it's making sure that you have lots of time to go and purchase that along the way. So in terms of the next steps of transition, and I know that there's 20 points on that map and how am I going to keep up and everything else? First of all, you may want to obviously put a copy of that on your fridge. Um, I have a copy of it on my desk and I'm ticking it off as we go along. So please do obviously have a copy out and about. And we'll also be sending those to the primary schools as well. So that the year six teachers can make sure you're on track as well. What we will do is at each point, Point, we will send an email out to let you know that the resources have been released and where they are so you're not having to search for them it will also go out with a very cool logo onto our website and onto Facebook so you can keep up to date as well but if you have any questions about transition that you haven't been able to ask tonight 
or along the way, then obviously we will share the transition email address. And that's checked by me and Mrs. Hayes and Mrs. Eaton every day. So no question is too big or too small. And obviously we'll get back to you with that. So please do keep putting all your questions in the chat tonight um, for the last few minutes as Mrs. Halliday closes tonight's event. And I'll get back to you with a written <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Halliday. Mrs. Carlton, thank you so much. And thank you for all the questions tonight. And um, thank you to everybody um, on the panel. Thank you to all of the staff um, for um, being here and um, sharing your love of Theal Green School and Mrs. Cartland um, for chairing the meeting so well as ever. And thank you to Stacey in the background. Year six, I want to finish with um, a little bit of a story. Um, so coming to secondary school, it, it is about you taking more responsibility for yourself now. Um, and it's absolutely OK that you make mistakes whilst you do that, um, because without making mistakes, we don't learn as people. We don't get better. So it's really important that we make mistakes that we can learn from. And it's how well we learn from them. And it's how well we put that new knowledge to good practice that really counts. And having looked at all of the questions tonight, um, I, I, it reminds me of quite how um, nerve wracking it can be coming from year six to your secondary school and just reading your questions. I felt really excited for you year six um, about all the opportunities ahead. And I was also thinking, listening to Mr. Lambert, if I were to do a word cloud of tonight, I think the word that would come out in those big letters in the middle is opportunity. Um, and so, you know, take that responsibility. You are growing up. Um, you are coming to secondary school. It's OK to make mistakes and take every opportunity that you're given. And I wanted to share a little story of a year seven with you who um, I remember back in October. Um, I spent about an hour searching the school with him for his blazer one lunchtime. And uh, I'm not sure we found it, but we had a jolly good hour together searching for it. And uh, I put a word in with his mum for him as well. And um, I was out on the crossing duty at the zebra crossing outside of school this afternoon. And it, it was a lovely sunny day. And I saw the year seven boy coming towards me, a big smile on his face. And um, he said, Mrs. Halliday, you know when you were up on the courts watching football at lunchtime? And I said, yes, wasn't it lovely? We had a lovely time. And I was out watching all of your seven and eight at lunchtime play football with the six formers. And he said, when you were on the courts, Mrs. Hallett, did you see my grey bag with my PE kit in it? And I said, oh, no, I don't remember. I don't think I've seen it. Um, did you go to reception? And he said, well, I did go to reception. And um, the thing is, I've lost my jumper as well. And I'm just a bit scared about going home tonight. And I see it reminded me, year six, of my very big, tall son, who's now six foot five and he's about 21 years old. But I remember him in year seven losing his uniform every single day and having to come home and tell me about it. So these things happen. But the message is year six is we're here to support you. And we're so excited um, about you coming here. I'm not promising we'll have an endless supply of uniform to replace your lost uniform so you don't get into trouble at home, um, but we can't wait to work with you and um, we look forward to seeing you in the summer. And um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We feel very privileged um, and uh, we're looking forward to the summer ahead and then of course, September when we get there. So thank you all. <laughs>